From time to time, having conversations with um, men I know around Ireland, many men have commented to me about their experiences in confession here in Ireland. And they will say to me about this priest or that priest or what they've been told in confession because the seal of confession applies to the priest. It doesn't apply to the person making the confession. They are free to talk about their own sins with whoever they like. And they will often tell me, oh, look, Robert, I went to confession with such and such priest. And he said, it wasn't a sin that I confessed. And what do you think, Robert? And generally, when I get asked that question, I just simply take out the catechism, the new catechism of the Catholic Church. I just take out the catechism and quote them the exact passage in the catechism, not passing any judgment, not saying what the priest said or right or wrong or anything like that. I'm just saying, I don't know what the priest is saying to you. This is what the catechism says. Because many men, especially in Ireland, are getting catechized on YouTube by many different uh, Catholic um, uh, bloggers and so forth and so forth. People might not like it. They criticize us. We 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 might seem to I don't know. It's 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 amazing the criticism I seem to be getting by just simply asking what is the faith. You know, I want to know what is the truth. How are we supposed to act? as Catholics what is the Christian path of perfection if I was a Muslim and I went to my spiritual leader in that faith and I said to them look I'm thinking of getting a second wife can you give me some advice and he would give me advice according to his religion Quran on how to get, go about getting a second wife and what I needed to do with the second wife Blah, blah. you, you know what I mean because in their religion you can have a man can have multiple wives. In the Catholic faith, in our Christian faith, Catholic faith, um, we are supposed to have one wife. A man is supposed to have one wife if he gets married and be faithful to that wife. That is what we are. That is the, the faith of the Catholic Church. And I could dig out the, the passage there. Or, for example, go to confession. Father, uh, I'd like to confess I've, uh, I've got drunk. And, uh, and you know, it's not up for the priest to say, oh, don't worry, sure, that's just a habit. Excuse me? You know, habits, people might have their different habits, but what is sin is still sin in the, 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 in the catechism. For example, on getting drunk, many people in Ireland don't realise this. The virtue of temperance, not, not spoken about, practically at all in the Irish church anymore. The virtue of temperance, this is 2290 in the catechism, disposes us to avoid every kind of excess. The abuse of food, the abuse of alcohol, tobacco or medicine. Those incur grave guilt who, by drunkenness or love of speed, endanger their own and others' safety on the road, at sea or in the air. Uh, the use of drugs, this is the next paragraph, 2 to 9 1. The use of drugs inflicts a grave damage on human health and life. Their use, except for on strictly therapeutic grounds, is a grave offence. Clandestine production and traffic of drugs are scandalous practice. They constitute direct cooperation in evil. Since they encourage people to practice grave. Uh, encourage people to practices gravely contrary to the moral law. So, um, we have a problem in Ireland with so many who come back to the faith, they're listening to us, they're getting catechized on the web by different bloggers, podcasters and so forth, that are, we are quoting the catechism. You know, let's go to the catechism. The new catechism, you know, this one. New catechism. You can also use the Baltimore. You know, the, I don't believe in Vatican II. The, the council set out to change the faith and morals of the Catholic Church. I stand corrected, but I, I think, you know, I'm not, I don't have a doctorate in theology, but I'm nearly sure, I'm nearly sure if I went up to a theologian, they will tell me that the faith and morals were not changed uh, with Vatican II. So if it was a, a sin, 
to uh, commit adultery before Vatican II, it's pretty much still a sin, you know. Um, and for priests to come around and contradict the catechism and tell somebody, oh, look, that's just a habit. You don't need to confess that often. There's a grave problem there in that a man that's coming to confession, that's growing in the spiritual life, growing in virtue, that's following the path of perfection, Christian perfection, somebody that's following the path of Christian perfection, because if you want to grow your spiritual life, you need to strip away sin. You need to strip away mortal sin so that you can grow in spiritual life. You know, if you, if you, if you, um, Read St. John of the Cross or uh, St. Teresa of Avila. They will tell you this. In order to progress, you need to strip away mortal sin, then venial sin, so that you can grow on a path of perfection in your life. And I wonder are there, are, how many priests in Ireland have never even started on the path of perfection. Because if they're telling men that it's not a sin, how are they living their own lives? How are they practicing faith themselves? Do they even know the catechism or live the faith? You know, Our Lady in Garabandal said, said what? You know, that, that, that sadly, that's, that some priests and bishops are leading souls to hell. It's on, if you tell a man that getting drunk is not a sin or some sexual sin is not a sin or so forth, and that man says, well, sure, sure, what am I going to confession for confessing that? Maybe it's not a sin. That man goes on to, you know, get drunk again, and you know call has a car crash or you know that's all on you it's all on you if if we're asked by somebody to teach them the faith to tell them what is the faith it's not up to us to inject in there what we think what i think it's not up for me to say well you know i don't think it's a sin but like it's not up for me to inject in my opinion just give the faith teach the faith what is the faith of the catholic church what does the catholic church teach in a specific topic topic what does it teach explain it to them you know there is a thing called growing in virtue there is a thing called the virtue of chastity long forgotten in this modern world which our technology that's full we're in, in, in a click of a button we can have access to god knows anything we like in the on that phone you know there is this lost virtue of chastity we are all called to it every single man and woman is called to it in their state of life you know if a man gets married to a woman the next day she remains paralyzed and is unable to move he is called to chastity in that marriage he made a vow to that woman to to until in sickness and in health do you understand and this and this this is not talked about or not spoken about in the church. You know, we are there to perfect ourselves, to lead each other, to perfect ourselves, to, to grow in faith, to grow in virtue. So that you, you know, if, if we, if we, if there was more confession, if there was more men willing to stand out and lead other men on this path of perfection, we would have, you know, a lot less rapes, a lot less suicides, a lot less people um you know destroying each other's lives when they get drunk you know if you ever look at um people convicted of murder in ireland you know the cases of the people convicted nearly always drink is involved or drugs nearly always at some stage this guy met this other guy outside a pub at night and he, the fight broke out and he hit him across the get head with a bottle do you know you just 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 dig out the, the trials and it's mainly men, uh, you know, and it's always drink involved. If we, if you could have dialed that back a little bit, dialed that back and shown them a different way to live life, which is the Christian path to perfection. And if you actually go and, because I've, I, if, I, I've been to Malthathus, and if you actually dig into what Orthodox teach, it's very, very similar. It's interesting that they also talk about this same path of um, theosis, of becoming like God, this this path to perfection. And in order to do to, to start in that path, you have to strip away mortal sin. You have to, you have to deny yourself, deny what your body wants, and turn to Christ. So you know, I'm just calling out to Irish priests in Ireland, 
If you're going to put yourself forward to offer confession, don't offer them. Don't offer your opinion on the faith. Offer what the church has always taught about faith and morals. The Catholic Church. People are not happy with it. They can always go to a Protestant church and, you know, there's lots of supermarkets out there for people who want to affirmation on what they, on how they want to live their life. There, I'm sure they can find it. You know, if you want a second and third wife, you know where to go, no? But there is such a thing as faithful morals in the Catholic church. There is. Are we, are we incapable of digging out the catechism of the Catholic church now to teach it? To say, well, this is what we teach. You know, and not everybody's ha- going to be happy. Like that young man that went to Christ and says, what can I do? What do I need to do to be perfect? And at the end of that conversation, Christ said, if you really want to be perfect, leave everything and come follow me. And that man went away sad. And the disciples said, Christ, he's got money. You know, he could have given us a little bit. Sure, we could have had him part time. Do you know? Mondays to Fridays. And then he could have gone back to his palace. You know Christ. Don't send him away. We could do a little bit of that. You see Christ doesn't work in that way. He doesn't want you half part time. Half time. He doesn't want to have you. Money. He wants all or nothing. And there is such a thing. After 2000 years. The Christian way of perfection. The Catholic faith. On faith and morals. How we're supposed to act. Live. As Catholics. You know. How we're supposed to make decisions in our lives. And I wish this had been taught to me years ago, but sadly, you know, it comes as, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 it comes when it comes. Do you know what I mean? And I'm going to call it out. I'm going to call it out. What's happening in Ireland? What's the point in being a priest if you won't teach what the church teaches? You know, it's on you as a priest when you give advice. It's on you how that man acts afterwards. If you tell him, no, actually, that's not a sin. Uh, you don't need to confess it. Well, that man probably won't come back to confession afterwards and will just, you know, you know, you'll have to deal with that if that man continues on the path that he's on. So until such a time as the church ch- changes its teaching on faith and morals when, you know, sin that we call today is not a sin in the future, until that happens, who knows, until that happens, stick with what the catechism tells, say, teaches. Lead men, teach men the faith, women. What is? How are they supposed to act? Maybe it will be difficult for them to change their lives. You know, it's always difficult to come out of addictions and change habits. It's, it's you know, the Christian path of perfection isn't easy. It wasn't easy for that young man to leave everything and follow Christ. And he went away sad. You know? But teach the faith in season and out of season. You know, if you're a priest, what is the point otherwise? And live the faith. If you if if you are if you claim to be a spiritual leader, a priest, live the faith. Strive to live the faith. You know, draw near to Christ. Draw near to His Sacred Heart. Now, I my spiritual director has always has asked me to avoid criticizing anybody in person. So I never, I'm I'm not going down that path. I'm just asking, live the faith. Live the faith. Draw near to Christ. You know, and if things haven't gone their way up to now in your life, you know, the past is the past. You can't change it. But today and onwards, you can. You can be. You can draw near to Christ today. You can perfect yourself. You can renew yourself. You know, priests are men as well. You know, Christ is there for you. And you have that amazing time, that amazing possibility of helping others. You know, after the adoration in Derry, Michael Kelly, the editor of the Irish Catholic, he published uh, a centre page um, article in the Irish Catholic about the 5,000 suicides since the signing of Good Friday Agreement. 5,000 suicides is the tip of the iceberg. You have 20 to 30,000 people below that iceberg in depression, you know, in, in despair. Reach out to them. Be the spiritual leader that helps them, turns their lives around. So when they come looking for help, you know, I'm a blogger. This is done in my part time. I have a nine to five job and, it, and a family and I'm blogging in the part time in my part. And people are reaching out to me, asking for help, asking me for to give them encouragement, to ask me, well, what does the church teach on X, Y and Z? 
and I have to say, well, the, the church teaches X, Y, and Z that is written here in this book. Or you can dig out the Baltimore Catechism or the Council of Trent Catechism. Um, you know, this is what the church has taught on X, Y, and Z subject, and this is what certain saints have said on this topic, and give them, you know, I I find it interesting that you know. I, on this channel now it's 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 what reaching nearly three million views and hundreds of thousands of hours watched you know people are hungry for the faith they're looking for the faith they're looking for answers and i do this part-time because i love my i love our lord and, and and our lord has asked me to renew the eucharist i want to lead people to him and priests should lead people to christ what did christ teach what did what does the church always taught in faith and morals? What have the saints taught? Lead people to the truth, to Christ. Lead them to him. You know, we are all sinners, but we don't need to remain in our sin. We, there is such a thing as the path to Christian perfection. So, and, so this isn't a criticism of priests. I don't like, you know, because they have difficult lives. Lead, but you, you're there to help. Because nobody arrives to despair from one day to the next. It's a general, it's a general process. It's a slow process. Open the doors to prayer. Prayer is the greatest proof of God's existence. Open the doors to prayer. Make sure you have an adoration chapel in every single parish in Ireland. And make sure you need an adoration chapel in every single parish in Ireland. And, if, you know, without that, you know, we're lost. Without that intimate contact with the Sacred Heart of Christ in the Eucharist, we're lost as Catholics. There's, what, 1,200 parishes in Ireland and about 2,000 chapels. There should be at least 1,200 perpetual adoration chapels, if possible. Well, adoration chapels, anyway, during the day. You know, so many people love spending time with our Lord. Make sure you have an adoration chapel. A small room in every parish where people can go for for uh, adoration. Maybe put out a card when you're available, available for confession. Maybe go and pray in that adoration chapel every evening and say, look, I'm avail I'm praying my breviary here every evening. And um, if you're if you're free when I'm praying my breviary and you need confession, just come. I, I always thought it was amazing in Poland. You'd often see priests in parish churches praying their breviary. They weren't wasting their time in a confessional. They were there praying. And the odd time, people would see them and go up for confession. Often seen, often saw it. You know, we don't have to let the faith die. You know, time in conf sitting in a confessional is not wasted if you have your breviary. Pray. You know, draw near to Christ. He actually does exist. Body, blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist. His word exists in the, in, in, in the Bible. He's there for you know, draw near to him. Draw near to him. There's a reason why he revealed his sacred heart to me. He allowed me to touch his sacred heart so that I could preach with conviction and truth of what I know to be true and to ask priests to bring souls to Christ. Lead them to him. Bring them to him. Make sure you have an adoration chapel in every parish in Ireland. Ask the faithful. You'll definitely get support from, from from lay Catholics across Ireland for adoration chapels you know it should be you know our Lord should be source centre in so much of our faith as Catholic as Vatican II said and you know we need to we need to renew the faith in the Eucharist and I'm so, if anyone hasn't seen Bishop Fonsi every evening has adoration every evening all during the pandemic up to now every single evening that's a bishop of the Eucharist we all need to be people of the Eucharist. Anyway, I go I, I go on too much. It's nearly twenty minutes. Uh, but you know, pray for pray for that. Lead souls to Christ. Lead them to Him. Let Him renew. God bless. Take care. Bye bye.